Jim here. Welcome back to the channel. Air consumption, big topic, important topic for scuba. Are you an experienced diver looking for ways to reduce your air consumption? Or are you a beginner, relatively new diver, who's afraid that you're ending your buddies or your group's dives prematurely? Stay tuned for some practical tips on how to get a grip on your air consumption and how to maybe reframe your thinking about air consumption so you're not so stressed about it. You can help the channel most by hitting subscribe. Thanks. First, how to calculate air consumption. Very important point. I'm not gonna describe it here. If you go below, there's a link to my website where you can find uh, all the calculations you need to calculate your air consumption. So then you know uh, what people are talking about when they talk about how many liters per minute I, I use and comparing with other folks, you'll learn how to calculate it for yourself. Point one, this is a, a reframing. I would like to invite you to reduce your overall stress about this topic in general. It's all relative. For example, I have a few thousand dives. Compared to other pros of my experience level, I actually have kind of high air consumption. It is what it is. I don't stress about it. There are certain features of, of ourselves, probably like baseline air consumption, that we really can't change. And it might be your body size. Uh, it might be, I, I've heard that people with large lung capacity are naturally using more than other people. Um, there are certain things that, that baseline things that we might not be able to affect so much. I remember being an early dive master. I'm thinking of, of one, one time in particular, this couple, they had at that time, I think five or 6,000 dives and I was guiding them. And, and they were really thin individuals, very thin, low, low body fat, small individuals. And they just kicked my butt all over the place with air consumption. And, and I think I took them for four dives. And I just came to this piece. It was like, some people have a lot better air consumption than me. And that's the way it is. I'm not gonna put the group in danger by stretching my air limits and squeezing my tank right down to the last minute putting myself in the danger of an air share, which puts my whole group in the danger. I just came to peace, came to terms with the issue. Some people are gonna have better. I set my limits. If I'm the first one, the second one, or the last one to turn the dive, it is what it is. That's just the way the dive went and no stress about it from then on. Back to baseline, cardio helps. So a lot of people are like, well, uh, you know, is it going to help me out if I, if I get in better shape or if I run or if I do something? It definitely helps, but it, my sense, my general sense is that improving your in-water comfort, which happens with experience, and your streamlining and your, your efficiency of movement, your fitting efficiency, those things are going to help more and they're easier to improve than your cardio. Cardio really takes work. Um, in in, uh, in my, my swimming training, one of the instructors that I follow always says, when, when you're building a faster boat or a faster submarine, it's resource-wise, it's easier to build a more streamlined boat or, or craft than it is to build a better engine. You're going to get more return from making your, your body, your craft, uh, more streamlined and more efficient rather than a better engine, so more cardio. Another thing that, that's, that's kind of hard to help is that a lot of times you're going to start out your, your dive with, with some drama. Your entry and your exit is often a point where you're using a lot of air and there's, there's not a lot we could do about it. So for example, if you have a serious wave entry, uh, a serious shore entry where there's serious drama going in, you're going to have to swim against waves or diving under, or you're, getting, you're getting pushed around. Same thing on a boat. You're, you're popping off a boat and you've got to swim against some current to get a line or pull yourself against current on a line to get down or hanging onto a line hard with some current up near the top. These are all things. And there's mental stress that goes along with that that's also gonna increase our breathing. By the time I get to five meters and, and the calm zone, I'll look at my air gauge and I'm like, dude, where'd this air go? I'm like down 20% of my air is gone, right? Where did that go? A lot of times I will notice that right at the beginning of the dive. There's a lot of stress that, that can't really be helped. The physical and mental stress that'll, that'll take a lot of air off my dive. It happens sometimes. You, know, you can get better at it. You're gonna learn to relax more or you know, learn to get down sooner or use less energy, but just recognize sometimes stuff like that happens. 
One strategy that, that some folks will use to reduce their air consumption is a bad one. In the literature, it's called skip breathing. Um, and what that is, it's a kind of a combination of taking deep breaths and then holding your breath for a skip beat. So you're like, The, the idea is, is that you're breathing less in your mind. You're thinking you're breathing less um, and therefore reducing your air consumption. One problem is uh, breathing has two functions. Function one is to take in more oxygen. Function two is to get rid of carbon dioxide. Now, carbon dioxide in, in scuba diving is what I call the silent killer. It's, it's uh, with between open circuit and closed circuit rebreathers. It's and, uh, and deep air diving it's probably killed more people than, than most other reasons. So carbon dioxide, for one thing, it, it causes narcosis, uh, some pretty severe narcosis. So if you're deep and you're working hard or skip breathing, you're gonna maybe get hit with some serious narcosis. Um, also, uh, if you know any folks who have headaches at the end of a dive, that is a classic CO2 um, overload symptom. And a lot of these people have way better air consumption than me because they're not breathing as much as they should. If you're, if you're ending your dives and you have headaches, pay attention to your breathing pattern during your dive. My guess is you might be doing skip breathing. And to combat that, you're just going to have to learn your air consumption is going to go up, but your enjoyment is also going to go up. Just breathe, right? Breathe. Breathe as much as you want, as freely as you want. A nice continuous breathing pattern. ways to reduce your, your air consumption. Point one, be lazy. If some of you have dove with me or seen videos of me, I am the laziest person in the water, man. People love to follow me because I'm so damn slow. Uh, I'm, I'm doing frog kicking. It's a very slow frog kick. You know, just whoosh, whoosh. I do my kick and then I'm gliding, I'm doing the max glide as I can. Next hit glide, I'm looking around. I'm trying to find creatures for, for my divers. Any dive plan I have, there, there's not a lot of work involved. Really good athletes in any sport, the better you get at it, the less your workout becomes because you're, you're becoming more efficient. Relax. Mental relaxation is uh, directly related to physical relaxation and how much you're air using. This is very hard. I call this, it's, it's related to the next point, in water comfort and so relaxation in water comfort, for me, they're very closely uh, correlated. And those are really hard things to work on, other than be in the water a lot. I've known some divers you know, who've had a lot of stress, general stress for water. They don't like water on their faces. It took them a long time to get used to that. As they become used to it, as you get more dives, without doing anything, your air consumption is naturally going to be reduced. Increasing your comfort is, is a big one. And it's gonna increase your relaxation, and it's gonna reduce your air consumption. But along with that bodily re relaxation, relaxing your arms. A lot of folks with high air consumption, they're using their arms a lot. And that is, just like your, your textbook said, that is a classic air user. It's not an efficient way to locomote through the water. You're gonna be using more air per distance moved. And also related to the next point, buoyancy. A lot of people who use their arms, myself included, when I was, when I was uh, you know, a beginner, using your arms because your buoyancy isn't right. To keep yourself up or keep yourself down. Buoyancy, you get your buoyancy down. So for me, I'm always working on my buoyancy, even now. I will do a kick, a frog kick, and I'll glide. And while I'm gliding, I'm testing my buoyancy. Am I net going up? Am I net going down? A lot of times, people are over finning because they're finning to stay down or they're finning to stay up. If you see a diver, if you look at your buddy, or if you look down at yourself, and you see this constant motion, tells me two things. Thing one, at that moment, you're too heavy. You're negatively buoyant. If you were finning and neutral, you'd be going up to the surface. If you're finning and you're not going up, tells me you're too heavy at the moment. You're, you're negatively buoyant. Not necessarily that you're wearing too much weight, although it might be. but. It tells me at that moment, if you stop finning, you'd sink. So you're finning, you're using energy that you don't need to use. Let your equipment do it. Fill your BC. And there you are. You could stop working. Have a look at yourself. Have a look at buddies. If you see that, someone's using more air than they need to. Also, it could be like this. 
too much air in your brain. So when you're moving through the water, stop your finning occasionally. For me, it's, it's a frog kick. Some people, it's a flutter. Stop and do a buoyancy test. Are you moving up or moving down? If you're just moving neutral, you're, you're doing well. Back on buoyancy, I would advise you to learn to use your breath, your lungs, instead of your BC. So this, this will help you two different ways. Way one, it takes air when you're If you're doing a lot of adjusting on your BC, that's all air that's going that you didn't get to breathe. Also, it's, uh, it, it's just inefficient. You can, you can do a lot more with your lungs than you think. For example, divers coming along the bottom and neutrally buoyant. Let's say this diver wants to go down deeper to look at something on the bottom. Now, let's say they're two or three meters off the bottom, swimming along. They want to go down two meters to look at something on the bottom, some kind of a creature they want to take a picture of. I'm going to advise is exhale. Then it's going to send you down and then inhale to slow yourself down. Now, because you went down and the air in your BC shrank, you're going to need to compensate by having more air in your lungs than you would normally have. So I would fill my lungs and I would, I would still be breathing, but I'd be breathing with relatively full lungs. And that's gonna increase my buoyancy for down there. Now, when I wanna come back up, I'll swim myself back up and then go back to my normal rate. Conversely, let's say I'm swimming along the bottom. I need to go over a rock before I come back down. Now, I know when I go over that rock, my buoyancy is going to increase. So when I go up, I could let air out of my BC, but I know when I come back down, I'll have to fill it up again or squirt some more air in it. Using the lungs, as I go up, exhale, and keep my lungs relatively empty, and then breathing with relatively empty lungs. And then as I come back down, resume my normal breathing pattern. Experimenting with your lungs will make you a, a better diver, will help you fine tune your buoyancy without having to use your BC as much. On finning, finning efficiency. Very, very often, beginners are doing what's called a bicycle kick. The right way to kick is gonna be like this. A bicycle kick, someone is doing this, and basically, they're, they're walking underwater and their, their fins are doing this underwater. They'll move forward, but really inefficiently. So you can really help out your, your air consumption by working on proper finning technique. Really feel the resistance. This, they're not gonna be feeling resistance. You need to feel resistance, because that's what's gonna move you through the water. I remember very clearly, actually, I was on a, I was on a technical course. I was quite an experienced diver at the time. I was on a technical course, and one of the, the tasks for the technical course <laughs> was to swim 1.8 kilometers with double tanks. I tell you what, at the end of that 1.8 kilometers, I learned a lot about how to move through the water. I thought I knew how to move through the water, but I learned a few tips. So yeah, going on some long swims will really teach you how to, how to streamline your body. It'll, it'll teach you some efficiency. On finning efficiency, fins. I have to talk about fins. So not all fins are created equal. For example, if you're a big diver, a big, meaning physically big, my experience, uh, split fins will often not move someone through the water as efficiently as, as other fins. So pick, pick the fins that are, that are good for you. I'm not gonna get into a debate, split fins or turtle fins. I use turtle fins, I use stiff fins. Generally speaking, a person who likes to flutter kick is going to like somewhat of a, certainly, a softer fin than someone like myself who does a frog kick. Frog kick is generally favors shorter, wider, stiffer fins because I'm not going to have as many kicks as a flutter kick. I'm going to go like a big powerful kick and then I'm going to glide as far as I can. A flutter kicker is more... So in my one kick, they might kick three times with less energy, with less energy. So that higher rate of speed requires softer fins. So make sure that you have the right fins for your kick. 
So for example, if you're doing a frog kick with soft fins, you're wasting a lot of energy. Likewise, if you're flutter kicking with too stiff of a fin, you also might be wasting energy. Try some fins and see how it works out for you. Talked about comfort, uh, increasing your comfort. Again, I think there's no substitute for experience, I'm afraid. Dive more, dive more in different kinds of conditions. Enjoy yourself, don't stress out. Don't worry about being the one who, who might end the dive early. Sometimes it's me, sometimes it's me. It just, it is what it is, just enjoy the dive. The more you dive, the better you're gonna get, the more relaxed you're gonna get, your air consumption is going to go down, I guarantee it. Next point, using the environment. How many times have you seen a buddy in high current, up off the bottom, fighting that current, using the air? I've seen it a lot. Use your environment. Uh, current is the thing that's gonna eat up your air more than anything. Staying low to the bottom, behind obstacles, moving from obstacle to obstacle is gonna reduce your air consumption considerably. Okay, when you're moving, and this comes with experience, when you're moving around, when you're planning your dive, going from place to place, think of where the resistance is, usually current, and how can you do that most efficiently? Maybe sometimes, I'm not proud to say it, sometimes I climb along the bottom. I've been in some really strong currents where there was nothing that I was going to kill on the bottom. It was just rock or just rocks, and I wasn't gonna hurt any coral, and I would climb climb against the current on the bottom. Right, think, think of the most efficient way to move from space to space. Brings me to my last point, dive planning. It's a lot nicer to do a drift dive than to do a dive where you have to climb against the current and then drift your way back. Think about your dive, think about how hard you're gonna be working at various points, and think about how that's gonna affect your air consumption. If you're gonna be really deep swimming against current, for me, that's a no thank you. I will pass on that dive plan. Lots of dive plans I will pass on. If it doesn't sound uh, enjoyable to me, doesn't sound relaxed, if it's a little bit harder work than I wanna be doing, I'll pass. So plan your dive to be as relaxed as possible, as enjoyable as possible, using the least amount of air. So think about the current, where's the current, where are you moving in relation to the current? Maybe you can move sideways to a current instead of against it. Have a look at your plan and see how that might affect your, your enjoyment and your air consumption. All right, I hope there were some interesting points there, some, some nuts and bolts, maybe some different ways to think about air consumption. Remember, it's a lot better to be the first one to end the dive, say, yep, I reached our group air limit, I reached it first, we're going up because of me, I'm sorry, rather than being the one who's out of air and causing a real panic for the group. You have your air limits, stick to them. If you're the one who hits it first, so be it. If I'm the one who hits it first, so be it. It is what it is. Okay, like, share, subscribe, pound that subscribe button if you've not, help out the channel. See you on the beach next time.